My name is Kelly Papel, Technical Manager for Invino Engineering, LLC, located in Tampa, Florida. We are an engineering firm focused on steam and concept systems. Today I want to talk about steam safety valves, sizing, selection, installation, best practices. Steam safety valve installed wherever the maximum allowable working steam pressure of a system or over pressurizing a containing vessel is likely to exceed to be exceeded in a particular under fault conditions due to the failure of another piece of equipment in the system. The typical system we have a pressure reducing valve here and we the, we have a pressure of 200 psi here and our equipment down here is only rated for 150 psi then we need to protect it with a safety relief valve and typically that safety relief valve will be set for the lowest rated equipment or um, component in the system pressure and temperature rating. The codes for the steam safety valve is done by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME through its committees Establish boiler and pressure vessel codes for safety through rules and formulas indicating of good practice. The National Board of Boiler and Pressure Vessel Inspectors has an authority to verify, administrate, and enforce the ASME code wherever it has been adopted. Therefore, any safety valve that we must follow the codes set out by ASME and under the jurisdiction of the National Board. Steam safety valve codes. In the steam system, we look at section one, which is for the boilers or power boilers. Section four is for heating boilers, and section eight is for pressure vessels out there away from the boiler in the steam system. So anything away from the boiler, we're typically looking at section eight uh, safety valves. The example shows right here on this picture here shows a safety valve located on a boiler, which is going to be section one. The code stands in its meaning. We have A, M, N, P, P, S, U, U2, U, V, and V. So these are the codes and these are the meanings of the code. Example, P, P is pressure piping, S is for power boilers, U is for pressure vessels, and V is for boiler safety valves. When we go to take and uh, discuss sizing or selection of, of the safety valve, we're looking at the design type. And the design type can be the standard uh, safety valve, which is shown here, or we can use pilot operated. Then we have body drains. A lifting device here, some people prefer to have a lifting device, some people do not prefer. Of course, the materials here have to be rated for the max pressure and temperature of the system. So that depends on the material. So if we get into the higher pressures where we're dealing with superheat, then the materials have to be uh, uh, selected for that superheat pressure and temperature. The ceiling of adjustments, typically there's adjustments here for the overpressurization and blow down. And the set point tolerances that we come up with on safety valves. Now, we'll get in, we're not going into the, the details of the internals of the safety valve, but we're going to talk about the uh, selection process. So here's a typical application we're going to do is for pressure reduction. So we're reducing steam pressure here, downstream, here. Our equipment downstream, we have a device that's only rated for 100 PSI, 338 degrees. So we're going to put in a safety valve here. So we're reducing the pressure here to 50 PSI for our operation but we have to protect the system, which is going to be 100 PSI-G. Now, 
The thing is that we typically have a 10% differential between the operating and the set pressure is recommended. And the thing is, is this pressure differential would be if we're operating 100 PSI or our safety valve is set for 100 PSI and we want to operate at 90 PSI or lower. And that's due to the safety valve can go into what we call simmer. So we want to be at least 10% away from our set pressure of our safety valve for the operating pressure of the system. Now, some people recommend 20%, you know, and that gets into the, the lower pressure operation where we're reducing pressures down to 10 or 12 PSI. And we have our safety valve set there for 5 PSI. So if my system safety valve is set for 15 PSI, I would operate the system at 10 PSI to stay away from that simmer effect of the safety valve. And that's per code that the safety valve can go into simmer. The total capacity of the safety valve at set pressure must exceed the control valve or pressure reducing valve maximum capacity if the valve were to fail in the fully open position. So if this valve was to fail in the fully open position, this safety valve has to be able to discharge the total capacity. Now total capacity on the boilers, the maximum BTU fuel input of boiler. So the safety valve must be able to relieve the maximum steam output with the maximum BTU input for that boiler, depending on the type of fuel that you're using for that boiler. Multiple safety valve installation is possible if the capacity cannot be reached with one safety valve. And that's common to find on boilers with that we have two or three safety valves to get to the capacity that it's required for that operation. The steam safety valve sizing designation is designated by numbers, <coughs> or excuse me, letters. So up here you'll see the letters here, K, L, M, N, P. That gives us the effective orifice area so if I have a set pressure here, 100 PSI, and a P orifice would have this capacity here, which is roughly around 37,012 pounds per hour. So when you walk up the safety valve and see four by six P, P means the orifice inside the safety valve. Now a safety relief valve must be mounted in the vertical position. And the reason mounted in the vertical position is because the safety valve is set at the assembler or the manufacturer in the vertical position. So you must duplicate how the position they set the safety valve up. The system must be free. The dirt or sack course. Upstream piping connection must be at least equal to the valve. And so the inlet of the valve is six inches, then this connection down here to be six inches. The steam safety valve, no shutoff valve can be installed down here and do not plug the drain valves and the discharge line should be no less than the full area of the valve. The other thing is, is that make sure that we have a drip pan elbow put onto the valve and this just changes direction from horizontal to vertical and increases the pipe or one pipe diameter and then the vent pipe can come down, but does not make contact with the drip pan elbow. The outlet always must discharge where no one can be at harm's way, typically to the top of the building or the unit, and cut it at a 45 degree angle to signify it's a steam safety valve. So we cut it at a 45 degree angle, it used to be seven feet, and just a recent change is now 10 feet above. So, uh, and that's a typical installation of a safety valve. So, we also have best practices up at our website to go into more detail on safety valves, but this is just a short version uh, and to give you some ideas. So if we can be of service, here's our contact information and have a great day.